Hey everyone. All right, on this one, I was experimenting a little and trying something a little bit new. Now, I started out using some Pinata Blanco Blanco, and I realized this part of the video is a little strange and boring. <laughs> I did try and speed it up a lot. Now, I don't have anything mixed with it. I just poured it out into that little cup so I could use it with my brush. And I traced out the branches of the tree and then some little flower buds, which I was really need some practice on. But um, anyway, I did that first just in the white. Now, and this is also, this is a 12 inch uh, Yupo round on this because I did want to get a little bit of the staining on here. I used uh, eggplant and I knew I would get quite a bit of staining. Now, what I did next. Um, I'm trying to show you all here so you can kind of see. I was trying to get an angle where the light was shining on it so you could see where I'd traced it in. All right, so what I did next here is this is mica powder or pigment powder, whatever. It was a color-shifting pigment powder that I had, and yeah, I have no idea what brand it is. I don't know that it even matters. So if you do resin work or anything, you know, and have some mica powder or pigment powders that you use with that, uh, you can try that like this. Oh, you see my little smear there? Yeah, don't sigh while you're doing this. I blew that stuff all across there. I just, I was getting a really bad headache. This took a really long time. Um, to do the white and then to do this, you can't tell from, because I've sped it up a lot. Um, but I, I had to hold my head at such awkward angles to be able to see the white that I'd started getting a headache. Uh, that is just some gold pigment powder or mica powder that uh, I went over the branches with. And now if I had this to do over again, and I probably will eventually, I don't think I would have put the gold on the branches. I feel like I lost a lot of it. All right, so there's my eggplant. I did mix this with alcohol. Yeah, that's one of my other, I, I like upcycle everything, reuse everything I possibly can. Uh, that was some little candy of the girls came in that. <laughs> so uh, I use it for mixing ink in occasionally. I did go ahead and mix it because I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, didn't want uh, to have it too dark, and I didn't want to have to work it too much going over top of the Blanco because I was concerned about washing off too much of the ink or too much of the Blanco. But one of the things that I had discovered in just playing with it and seeing what would happen is, as you know, alcohol doesn't move it very good. Well, unless you just really overwork it or you rub it with something, it doesn't move it at all once you put it down on there and let it dry. So, but I also learned if you put ink over it, you get this gorgeous staining on the white that is darker than the rest of your painting. So I was just thinking, well, how cool is that? I, I've been working on a commission lately and I, I don't normally do commissions, but this was um, someone who had asked me that I just couldn't say no to. And so <laughs> I was trying out some new ideas for this commissions and that's how this came about. But uh, yeah, that staining just looks fantastic. Whatever color it will stain the Yupo, Sometimes it will stain it that color, but you'll notice that the eggplant actually stained more pink on the Blanco where it stains the paper blue or the Yupo blue. So it was really interesting. Now I did get some wash off of the mica powder. Uh, going forward, and I am going to do something like this again, but I think what I will do next time is just do the Blanco, then do the painting, and after I'm done with the painting, go back in with the mica powder before I seal it. I'll just, I'll have to be real cautious with the sealing because I think, uh, you know, the, where I use the spray varnish, it's liable to blow the mica powder everywhere. So, I mean, I'll have to keep my can back pretty far and do a really light spray 
to get the mica powder kind of sealed down so that it doesn't blow it all off. But um, this was a lot of fun to try to get figured out. Um, I had even one of my granddaughters, Zoe, she was drawing faces and, and little figures and stuff with the Blanco on paper for me to use testing to see what order of putting stuff down might work the best and, and how much mica powder I might lose uh, as I was putting the ink over. So, uh, we, we had, it was sort of a family project, I guess, getting this done, but it, it turned out really good. The, the pictures absolutely don't do it justice. The still shots that I have on here, I just could not get a good shot showing the uh, color change effect of the mica powder that I used on the flowers. Now it was kind of a really dark pink, almost reddish mica powder, and but it or I think it says pigment powder actually on it. But um, as you tilt it, the the color change to it is blue, and it, it looked fantastic. But I just had a terrible time being able to actually show that to you all. Now I did, I left all of this video really quickly, or uh, really quickly, really sped, I, mm, okay, I sped up <laughs> this video quite a bit just because, you know, a lot of it you couldn't really see good uh, when I was doing the white or the Blanco, and then putting down the mica powder was just tedious. It's tedious for me to do, tedious for you all to watch, so that was really sped up. Um, I did speed this painting part up just a tiny bit because there's I'm not doing anything new here with the actual painting. Um, the only thing I really tried to do was not go over anywhere that I had the Blanco or the, um, the I'm just going to call it mica powder, the mica powder. Uh, I tried not to go over those areas too much. Didn't want to worry about washing any of it off by accident. So, I the, the only time I went over the parts with the Blanco and the mica powder more than just about, you know, once or twice, long enough to get my inks moving off of them, was if I wanted to try to darken up, like if I missed a little spot, on the Blanco and wanted to try and, and get it darker because uh, I noticed it doesn't stain evenly. And that's one of the things that I really thought was cool about it. I could see lines in it and a little different uh, shading just depending on how concentrated the alcohol ink was when it went over that part, like how much it had already spread out or, you know, if I how much alcohol was in it after I put it down and then added, you know, more alcohol to it. So that was, uh, you can see right there, I, I had too dark of a section in there, so I was trying to push some of the ink off of it so that you could see the branches and the flowers good. But I did end up pushing off a lot of the mica powder which now that did blend with my inks and gave me a really cool shimmer in the inks and I, I did like that and I'm going to do a little more experimenting I think just with mixing some mica powder with the ink or something along those lines just to see what happens when I paint with it like that if I put mica powder down in it to start with so um, just something really cool that I wanted to share with you all, give you some ideas. I'm not at all a good freehand painter, so, you know, please don't be too critical of my branches <laughs> and little, little flower buds and flowers that I sort of dabbed on there. Plus, I was just kind of in a hurry because this was more of a, an experiment than anything for me right here. I had just done, you know, a few small little swatches on the things that uh, that Zoe had painted for me. And uh, I wanted to try it out on a bigger scale and see how it was going to work when I really put it into practice. So that's what this was. But I did want to share it with you all because I was really happy with the way that it turned out. 
let's I was trying to think I don't really have a lot else to tell you about this one although if you're new and you haven't worked with eggplant before do keep in mind that if you're using Yupo you're gonna get that underlying blue staining from eggplant the Ranger eggplant color now which is gorgeous it gives you this amazing depth and and color variations in your painting but it can be a little tricky to if you want to kind of hide the edges of that staining uh, I didn't want to push my ink back so far that that was the only edge I had left was just the stain and trying to get it wispy to keep it coming out over that stain is a little hard because it's like it has to sort of run out of energy to stain because it will continue to stain farther out. So you, once you get to a certain point, it'll stop staining, but that's when you're pretty much left with nothing but that kind of reddish, pinkish color. Uh, it, it pretty much has to get to that before you stop seeing the staining. And by then you don't have very much opacity i guess i don't i'm not sure of the word i want to use there um your your ink is so translucent and thin that you can't really cover up the staining good it, it makes it a little bit difficult to to do it, it's certainly not impossible but just be aware if you haven't done it before that it can be a little tricky if you want to hide the edges of that staining a little bit I just like to sort of have it more blended in as an underlay, not have the staining be all you can see at the edge. So that was why I was, you know, really going back over and you'll see that it takes me a little bit of time on each part because I was trying to be really careful about not restaining farther out, but also, you know, to make sure that I kind of covered that blue edge a little. And that's just a matter of taste. You know, you can do it however you want. I know a lot of you don't really do a lot of the wispy parts on the edge of your paintings. Or, you know, where your ink stops sometimes. So, you know, that's uh, just, this is just, you know, one way to do it. There's certainly umpteen ways to do it. And you just got to decide what you like the best and what works for you. Uh, let's see, things I didn't say, this was 99% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I did not use pinata brass in this one uh, because of the mica powder in this. I, I sort of wish I had, but at the same time, you know, I did still kind of get that shimmer from the mica powder. It didn't I mean, I didn't have much on the paper, so uh, I don't know what it would have done had I had more down on there to blend with the ink. But I didn't get, you know, the veining like I would. Actually, I do see a little bit of the veining in there. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I need to go. I, I wasn't paying enough attention to the beginning of the video when I first started painting and I can't remember because I actually did this one a few days ago and now I completely can't remember. I'm sorry I'm actually walking through the house as I'm talking to you all because I was trying to find the painting so I could look at it and tell you. I don't think I used brass but okay you all will know better than me because you've just watched that part of the video and i wasn't looking at it carefully enough <laughs> so i either did or did not use pinata brass if i did it was undiluted i did not put alcohol in it <laughs> so we'll just say that and that that covers it if i did so so you'll be aware of that but uh i, I kept thinking i didn't use the brass because i didn't want to worry about it covering the branches and the flowers too much but i may have ended up using a few drops of it here and there i, I honestly don't know i'm sorry so well anyway uh, my 500 watt revlon styling brush hair dryer with the brush attachment removed on the cool setting uh 
I think that's about it. And you can see I'm trying to get this at an angle. Yeah, that really looks like I used the brass. I think I must have. Um, I was trying to get this at an angle where you all could see the blue shimmer in the flowers and the kind of gold shimmer in the branches. But it was almost impossible i just could not i'd say i flipped my light down there more trying to get it but and you can kind of see i'm kind of pointing out there where you can see the blue a little bit but it looks much better in person but anyway this gives you all something to try out that's new if you want to it gives you a new direction to kind of take some of your paintings every now and then uh, you might be able to do this with a stencil i'm not sure uh, I have a lot of trouble with alcohol ink leaking under a stencil, so I don't know how well the Blanco would work like that. But anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed this. It uh, was a lot of fun to try out, and I will be back with more eventually on at showing uh, more ways to ways that I've used the Blanco under paintings. So I hope all of you have a great day. I love everyone, and I'll see y'all real soon. Bye, everyone.